Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. And church family, we know that on Tuesdays we discuss some of the current topics that are that affect the church. And then on Thursdays we uh, like to ask you questions that draw out your studies for upcoming Sunday. Yeah. Today, Pastor, this is, and you, you spoke of this on, on Sunday at the conclusion of your message, uh, which was an amazing message, convicted me uh, about being a father and but you went on to share about this bill that was introduced, AB 2223. And, you know, in, in Exodus chapter 1, we see that Pharaoh had ordered the midwives that were assisting Hebrew mothers to have babies to kill all males. Then we see later on in Matthew chapter 2 that Herod put an order out to kill all newborns, excuse me, male children who were in Bethlehem from, from two years and older and under. And so now we're faced with this bill that Assemblywoman Buffy Wicks has promoted. I mean, when we talk about just straight out blatant evilness, we have this leg, this proposed legend, or which passed, that pretty much that a baby can be killed up to 28 days. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. I have children. You have children and grandchildren, Pastor. We see this blatant evilness in front of us how do we respond to something like this well we need to make our voices heard obviously when i was in israel we were in israel we um were not aware of the current things that were taking place here in california when i got home um we got home on a tuesday and by the end of the week it had come to my attention what was taking place and all of that and um you know that's when I began to consider some things, and that's why the uh, week after Easter, uh, I wanted to include some comments related to AB 2223 with an exhortation to believers, our church, and those who are watching online, those who live in California, especially to to uh, contact their uh, assembly people and, and let them know. We need to make our voices heard because this is, um, as, as is being presented by those who are more aware of uh, how this kind of legislation is going to truly impact and the nuances of the wording and all, um, they're saying that this includes uh, uh, a baby that could be born that could be 28 days after birth, you know. So 28 days, if, if the baby is born, we'll say, a week early or two weeks early, and then it goes into another couple of weeks, it could be 28 days after birth, uh, that the mother uh, with impunity could, in one way or another, encourage the, uh, the ending of that child's life. And I was sharing on, on Sunday that this is really almost like uh, the times of uh, early Jewish history, the worship of the, uh, the god Molech, who uh, would receive infant sacrifices, right? And so the, the putting to death of newborn babies is as heinous as it can be. The innocence and everything that pertains to a, a newborn the thought that somebody would legislate in this great state of California that that child, for pretty much any reason, could be put to death is something that Americans and Californians in particular should rise up and, and make our voices heard about. So I contacted my particular assembly, assemblyman and uh, registered um, my protest and... Uh, a request to them to oppose this actually finding itself into California law. And I would encourage anybody to just go in and discover your uh, assemblyman, whoever it is, and just go to the page and, and it'll give you some directives how to leave a comment. Leave your comment. Let them know that you oppose it. We should do that. Because this is, this is a new level of evil. It, it already was evil. Abortion in and of itself, when there was arguments for the, the safety of the mother and this and that, 
you know, there were those who would would argue that, or they would say in, in cases of, of rape or incest, and they always use those, those arguments, even though the percentage of pregnancies that came in that manner were somewhere around one or less than 1% of all abortions. So it had actually became the noble cause to protect the violated woman. And, and God knows, you know, that we should not ever have anything but sympathy for a woman who's been harmed. Yet at the same time, two wrongs never have added up to a right. And especially when, uh, when Roe v. Wade was decided and, and made into law because of a, a lie that had been stated where uh, the woman who became uh, uh, the test case for it and she later admitted that she had not been raped, that she just desired an abortion and um, tried to recant, but by that time it was already law. She later had become a believer in Christ and said, this is wrong. Well, once it got into the law, there's, you know, from then on, it's been something that, that people resist being overturned. So, John, I mean, it started out with this this attitude that we're going to protect the life of a woman and that nature. And now it's become, we can kill a baby. I mean, that is, you just mentioned heinous. That is straight disgusting. It's devilish. What, Pastor, what, in a quote unquote, what Pandora's box of evilness is being opened to such a dark, dark thing? Listen, when you have Supreme Court justices who cannot give you a definition of a woman their their imaginations are darkened because of sin the the sin when people don't realize that sin is what it is it it permeates every essence of a human being and it and it distorts all of your ability to know what is right it distorts it Without the, the illumination of the Spirit of God, without the conviction of the Holy Spirit, without the direction of God's Word, you're going to do what is right in your own eyes. That's mm -hmm. what they do. We'll be looking tomorrow night in Ephesians chapter 4, where Paul begins to speak about what the unsaved, how they think, and I'll be sharing about this uh, from the Word. That's what it is. It is, a, it is the bondage of, of a human being to sin. They are... They are they are uh, slaves of sin. Their entire way of thinking without the, the light of the gospel is this pure darkness. They walk in darkness. They crave the darkness. They develop their moral fabric because of the dark. It's all darkness, and that's why we need the light of life from Christ. Amen. And so, yes, when you get to the point, John, where you can argue that an infant, a beautiful baby on a table, can be starved to death or even beaten to death or or put to death in whatever variety of ways may be used and you will justify and argue that, that's evil. That's evil incarnate. Mm. I was watching a, a video a while back of a, um, a mother dog, a mother dog that will protect her, her puppies from anybody harming them, even... Even a dog, I've seen it with different animals. You know, sometimes people will post the loving protective instinct of a mother, you know, where a cat, a kitten is hit by another cat and the mother of that little kitten <laughs> goes bonkers on the one that, that, that assaulted it. That's, that's animal life. But when you have human beings who are able to argue that that baby should die because mama doesn't want it, that's evil. And I don't know anybody with a moral backbone who could ever support mm. something like that. They don't know God. And America is going to be judged in a very harsh way if we don't wake up. I mean, that's sobering. It is. It ought to be. This is where we've gotten. This constant onslaught against truth and love and, and, and Christ and his message. It's a constant hatred of God that is shown by the society we live in. And, and Christians, we, we are not to be belligerent and we're not to be 
argumentative and wanting to fight constantly. I, I don't think it's a, a <laughs> I don't think it's a wise thing for me as a pastor to to incite my church body into anger, to hatred of the president and and all of those evil things that very often presidents will bring into law. But we need to hate the darkness. We need to be aware we're in a spiritual war. We need to pray for those who are in authority over us, but we also need to let our voices be known. Amen. So we're to, we can contact our assemblymen. I was on, yes. before we came into our meeting here, I was able to go on and I just Googled assemblymen in, in uh, my area and it comes up and you're able to, yes. it, it walks you through it. Yes. And, and, it's and very so, easy. What's it take, two minutes? Two minutes, two minutes. And so encourage your church family to do We need to do thing. that. Because as you mentioned on Sunday, this is the time that we need to speak up for those who can't. If they can't speak, we need to speak. Yeah. Sobering, Pastor. I mean, it's just disgusting how blatant and how... And we're getting a taste of what evil truly this is. This is evil. And so, uh, again, church family, I believe we have a duty to stand. And, and it's time we're not inciting riots and, and you know... Let uh, your voice be heard. Just let our voices be heard and... And be salt and light into this right. dark world. I mean, I'm thinking, what's next? Our five, six, seven, eight, nine-year-old. You know, it well, just, why not? At what point do you stop? It, it's disgusting. So, Pastor, wanted to get your feedback on that. Uh, it is very sobering and dark, but we keep our eyes on Jesus and, and we stand. That's right. We stand, and so, uh, Pastor, thank you for uh, sharing with us, church family. Hope you enjoyed this. And again, what a great privilege it is for, for us to stand up during this time in unity in Christ. And I want to invite you guys to our services tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. It's Ephesians chapter 4, as you mentioned. Yep. And it's going to tie in a little bit to what you're sharing It'll here. tie in completely with this. And so invite your friends and family to come on out. And Friday, we have an exciting day coming. We have our men's barbecue. It's sold out. Yeah. And so uh, uh, men, uh, look forward to seeing you guys. And so uh, invite your friends and family also to our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45. And you know, these are the times that we need to be equipped in God's Word, Amen. especially now. Amen. So you guys, thank you for tuning in. Pastor, thank you for your time. God bless you guys, and we'll see you soon.